Reddit thread. What are some major red flags you should never ignore? When all the birds stop chirping. If you're in the woods and suddenly you encounter a group of animals all running in the opposite direction, you're headed, oops, I don't know why I stopped reading that halfway through, and EOD at a dead run outranks everybody. I'm loving the blend of relationships slash environmental answers to the questions. When birds stop chirping. When they cheat with you, they'll cheat on you. The variety is amusing. You know, I should probably take this moment to really congratulate Micro Jelly for not making a stupid edit going, oh, front page, I can't believe I did it. Those are always really annoying, and they show up like at 90% of these. Uh, I think I'll just go ahead and mention every time someone doesn't make an edit to say, oh, I can't believe this made it to the front page. So, yeah. Good job, Micro Jelly. On, on to the actual thing, though. When someone starts constantly repeating something in a loud voice, chances are they will get violent. Keep your guard up. Yes, this is known as a face a feedback loop. When people are hyped with adrenaline and their body begins to fall into a fight or flight mode, their brain stops processing information. They just get stuck in whatever they were saying, and they keep repeating to fill the void of silence as they prepare for the next physical action. Yes, we were taught in self-defense classes that this is a serious warning sign. Also, a quick way to know if someone w has training is if they immediately take a defensive stance when they observe someone repeating things. What are some nonviolent ways to attempt to break the loop? Hmm. I want to say that. Not an expert, but if there any if there's any way you can just leave or back down, do it. Don't get into a situation you don't have to. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Can't you just tell me I'm a pussy and then we'll all move on with our lives? I'm a little fat girl. 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 See, I kept getting louder and louder. That username, Octopodal. Uh, let's see. Honestly, if five plus of your close friends have spent extended time with your SO and can't find anything positive to say about him or her, that's probably a strong indicator that you may be fooling yourself in your relationship. <laughs> My roommate needs this one. Welcome to my last relationship. A friend of mine recently took this advice after a year of telling us of us telling him to run. He realized that we were right after she lied about being pregnant on Facebook. When confronted about it, she acted like it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> she never said it right, and to this day, tons of people think he left her after he found out she was pregnant. What? Thought it was just a little weight gain and a flu symptoms. I'm prego. This is a good one. None of my friends like my ex-girlfriend. They all thought she was a miserable bitch to be around, and I used to defend her all the time. Now I realize that she was a miserable bitch. If your friends don't like your SO, they are probably seeing him slash her for who they truly are without the rose-colored glasses. SO, of course, stands for significant other. Uh, for all you two people in the world who don't know what that means. I've got two friends who had girlfriends slash fiancés like that. One eventually wised up and saw her for the absolute manipulative horror she had become and canceled the wedding. The other is still with this girl and I haven't seen him in over a year. He lives 15 minutes away and we were flatmates for over a year. He just straight up stopped answering our text messages or any sort of invites. Sad really as he was one of my best friends. Someone who calls you a best friend shortly after meeting you. <laughs> These people are almost always dramatic and will not hesitate to drop you in an instant. <laughs> oh, that's that's so true. God, I, that reminds me of this girl from work. She was so annoying. I wonder what happened to her. I find this so off-putting. I once spent a little time hanging around with a guy I met five years ago, and we kept talking about how we'd be best friends for five years, and after so many years of friendship and so on. Look, dude, we hung out once back when we texted like four times since. Okay, I messed that up. Look, dude, we hung out once back then, and we've texted like four times since. Usually when you wanted something from me, Usually, when you wanted something from me. We are not friends. It went from weird to annoying to actually kind of creepy. The way he kept saying we'd be friends for so long. Maybe he's desperately lonely, not dramatic? <laughs> eh, too long, didn't read. Trapped in Arctic Circle for a month in winter. With weird, possibly mentally ill roommate. I actually work in the Arctic, in the oil fields. And we have roommates while we were in camp. So I have this one roomie. Eh... So I have this one roomie is who is well known to be a little off. 
could never be still constantly making noises and by constantly I mean all the fucking time crumpling paper taping on shit with pens opening closing doors slash drawers I spent a month without a single moment of silence but this guy would stop what he was doing and get really quiet whenever I was on the phone every fucking time total silence and while I'm talking he would laugh when I said something funny or grunt in disagreement <laughs> if he didn't like what I said but I never really spoke about it and was always super nice to the guy I made casual conversation with him often even though it absolutely enraged me enraged man I don't know why I said that wrong because the guy clearly had some sort of slight mental disability so I am bitching to my wife about this just event and she asked me a question she says well have you ever seen him make a phone call and I think about it and I realize no I hadn't ever and we spent four weeks around each other five or six hours a day not a text or even really him talking to anyone else it brought me to a stark realization I may be the I may be Ving guys, this guy's only friend. I know this guy is in his mid-40s, no wife, no girlfriends, no kids, and she points out that maybe he's just kind of living vicariously through my phone calls. This guy was never rude, always super nice, very clean, just super, super weird and off-putting. And in a place like this where we're very, very isolated, that stuff matters. Extremely long story, short, I guess. This really changed my perspective. I became much more friendlier to the guy, and even didn't mind as much when he eavesdropped on me. I even went as far to say nice stuff about him when I knew he could hear me. And when my hitch was over and I had to leave, the guy comes in and sees me packing and looks all kind of dejected and tells me he has been doing this kind of work for 12 years and here you get a new rookie every month that I am the best for me he ever had. It made me pretty happy to hear that. So I told him, you too, buddy. I saw him smile really big. I try to keep that shit in my mind more now and I'm dealing with weird people nowadays. Oh, that's so cute. Update. So I received a ton of comments and good vibes about all of this. So I figured I'd give you guys more info. I still see him from time to time. I always say hey and I ask about the guy. Apparently he has been given a single status room, which is actually a pretty big deal and user reserved for big wig types. And he's basically a janitor and he basically a janitor. Okay. Oops, why does it always tell me important updates while I'm uh, reading these things? Luckily they don't show up on the thing, I think. If someone is perpetually a victim, watch out because nothing is their fault. The victim mentality. It's so hard to fall out of this though because it's so comforting to know that everything's not your fault. Also, if someone you know constantly talks shits about all their friends to you, what's stopping them from talking shit about you to all their friends? <laughs> oh, so true. I have a good friend that I would have dated if it wasn't for this. See, it was your fault that you didn't date <laughs> It was also her boss's fault she got fired, despite the fact that she, my friend, yelled at him, her boss, in front of a customer. Yep, they weren't strong enough. How can someone fix this about themselves? Honestly, by paying more attention and thinking through your actions and choices and how they influence others. There is no magic bullet for better self-awareness. You need to think about your relationships with the world and how not everything and everyone lives to serve you or make you happy. The more realistic you understand the world and the people in it, the less you think you are an eternal victim, since you recognize others and their plight, and also hold more realistic expectations and understandings of events. Stop victimizing me and dating already. I sometimes get into the victim mentality whenever I am the target of bad luck whenever I'm playing Heroes of the Storm or pet battling. I always got to remind myself, you know what, luck, it's both way streak. I was probably out of position or something when I got killed there. It's not entirely uh, someone else's fault. When the neighbors like them, but their kids don't. Wait, what? Edit. To rephrase, if a person is well-liked by his acquaintances, but hated by the people closest to him, that person is probably not actually nice. Or, when the neighbors like a person, but the person is not liked by their own children, then that person is probably not actually a good person. Oh. And this resonates with you. Please check out Raised by Narcissists and Parent Less by Choice. Stay strong, everyone. A person must be more than their scars. My mother was one of the most selfish, narcissistic people I've ever met in my life. My brother and I didn't even go to her funeral. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone from her church could understand what kind of bastard children wouldn't come to such a nice lady's funeral. 
I know that feeling. At least you found out who your real friends were. Oh, that sounds just like, just like my mother. She's made a real effort to change herself though, so can't really hold that against her anymore. This is a good one. My late grandmother got along very, very well with anyone that she didn't interact with for longer than an hour at a time. <laughs> Meanwhile, she never really noticed how every year on her birthday, my aunt just happened to be visiting my parents and me another continent. <laughs> Our neighbor was the sweetest guy. He was a drunk though, but a helpful, nice drunk to us. His son moved out when he graduated high school and we never saw him visit. No one from his family ever checked up on our neighbor. We didn't know his family hated him until someone discovered his body four months after he died, decaying in his house. Wow. So he was a dead type of neighbor. <laughs> no wonder his kids never visit. This is my father. I was always so sick of people telling me what an amazing man he is. Yeah, real upstanding citizen that thought it was okay to scream at his wife and kids or hit his 15 year old daughter in the throat and shove his family into walls and get blackout drunk all the time. Reading this thread reminds you of your SO. Shit, <laughs> hindsight is 2020. Happens to the best of us. When your mail order bride moves her brother and his kids in with you, <laughs> that's not her brother. Oh, the Malcolm in the Middle episode. <laughs> I actually witnessed a mail order bride from an irated part of the Ukraine do this kind of thing. She married a much older sickly man and had to tutor a younger guy in Ukraine several times a week in Ohio. From an irritated part of Ukraine. You might want to get that looked at, I don't get it. Nice Malcolm in the Middle reference. Malcolm, I don't get it. Was it in a later season? It was when their grandmother has them do challenges and whoever wins would marry this random girl she brought with her. Reese loses but still marries her. Later on he catches her in bed with her brother and Reese trusts her. <laughs> this sisterly massages. <laughs> uh, from a medical point of view, chest pains, unexplained weight loss, blood from any hole bar than your nose. Bar your nose. Oh, okay, except your nose. Breast lumps or any new lumps for that matter. Edit. Right. Vagina bleeds monthly. Edit. Two. Red flags are things you should see the doctor about. They do not necessarily mean you're dying. You should be reassured if your doctor assesses you and says there's nothing wrong. Oh my god, my vagina bleeds on the regular. Red flag. Don't ignore it. Uh, honestly, anytime you have unexplained rapid weight loss, there could be something bad going on. Many different types of disease like tumors and diabetes present with that as obvious sign. When someone does something wrong or is caught in a lie, but you end up apologizing to them somehow, huge red flag for a master manipulator. What? How does someone do that? And how can they teach me their ways? I feel like this happens to me. Do you think it's better to stand up and just let them say whatever they will make you feel bad? It seems like whenever I point out something that makes me upset with my SO, she says, sorry, everything I do is wrong, and then walks away. That's how it is almost every time we fight. <laughs> I just got out of a relationship like this. She was cheating, and even that somehow boiled down to being my fault in her eyes. Not telling you what to do slash handle your situation, just chime in with my experience. Oh dear lord, this is my biggest fear. That is the last thing I ever want to have in a relationship. You can dump me to be with him, but please don't cheat on me. I won't tell you, okay, I'm not going to listen to Reddit's relationship advice. For SOs or just friendships in general, if you find yourself frequently making excuses for someone else's behavior by saying that's not who X really is, or otherwise having to defend them to people you care about and their behavior never changes, heads up. It's time to examine yourself in your relationship. Sticking up for people is fine and good, but if you're consistently defending or nibbling enabling <laughs> their, be their bad behavior that helps neither you nor them. If you just start texting someone and they seem clingy. For example, I started texting this guy and I didn't respond quick enough. He'll say things like, guess I scared you off, <laughs> or I wish I was interesting enough to hold your attention. <laughs> oh my god. I hate people like that. I remember there was this one girl that, I don't know why the hell I gave her my number. But anyway, she's the reason I turned my phone off at night because I was tired of getting texts at 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning. It wasn't just like one text either. I'd get like five or six of them. It's like, who who does this? We just met like a few days ago. She was also really boring. <coughs> my high school. Me apologize to many people. Oh my god, this was so me. I think I'm getting better though. 
a quote from Trailer Park Boys. If you love something, let it go. If it comes back to you, then it loves you too. If it doesn't, then you're an asshole. Each time I think about questioning her or doubting anything, I just remember that quote and put the phone down. If you say no to someone... If you say no to something small and they won't take no for an answer, they either won't respect you to no they either won't respect your no to larger things or they just absolutely don't care about you and your decisions. I used to be friends with someone who wouldn't take no for an answer on little things. Every little thing. Food, plans, showing up to my house when I said I couldn't hang out that day. Then he asked to have sex with me and argued with me for an hour when I said no. I cut off all contact with him after I found out he raped a girl a few weeks after that. What? That escalated quickly. Holy shit. <laughs> I did not expect that one. Escalated quickly, that one did. <laughs> Yes, this is my recent experience with the guy. I agreed to hang out with him, and he kept getting handsy and would not stop. He asked me on a date. I said no. He kept persisting. Eventually, got tired of giving subtle hints, so I just said, To be clear, I'm saying no for a date. He asked if we could still hang out as friends. I was like, okay, which got him all excited because, according to him, it wasn't a rejection. Then he thinks we're dating. Eventually, I have to call him out and say I'm not interested. This turns into a half-hour conversation of how I should give him a chance. Would I date him in various hypothetical situations, etc.? He asked me, yes or no, do you like me? To which I said no. His response, he hesitated. That means you like me. Oh my god. <laughs> this guy. He would not let me hang up on the phone. Finally, I just had to tell him I was saying goodbye and hanging up. Ugh. That sounds like a real headache to deal with. I think he, I think the call should be more like, Creepy man, I'll tell you why you should date me. Okay, brighten my day. Well, four, hangs up phone. Run while you can. Oh, sweet Jesus, just selecting the text you want to quote and hitting reply quotes it I was just going to copy and paste. I'm wondering why you agreed to this. He was already violating your boundaries. Seriously, no reason to continue hanging out with someone in this situation. Totally. If someone is always gossiping, gossiping to you about other people they're almost certainly talking shit about you too well duh I'm not sure if this counts but if you feel as your relationship slash friendship has fallen apart due to lack of interest on behalf of the partner 80% of the time they feel the same way if you think you don't hang out just because they don't want to then call and hang out keep in contact oh that's so true I wouldn't under I always forget that people don't think this way uh, friendships actually take quite a bit of effort, unless you're just a really, I don't know, unless you're a really hot girl, then you don't really have to care, <laughs> because they're going to be doing whatever they can to, to talk to you, both boys and girls, or if you're a hot guy too, it works. If you're just a good looking person, you don't have to worry about uh, putting effort into a friendship, because they'll want to hang out with you. The thing, if things go quiet and the number of people on the street drops down to almost zero, Source was involved in a shooting in Chicago. Edit. Since people were asking, I realized something was off when things started getting quiet. More in the, huh, that's odd, than the oh shit manner. The shooting occurred in Lake, Sh Lake Shore area of Chicago. The shooter was caught later. And the victims that were hit, I wasn't survived. I'd rather not go into details beyond that, honestly. I used to work with a guy who teaches self-defense. One of the things he tells his students, especially the females, is that if someone is offering you drinks, or anything really, and you say no, but they keep pushing the issue or questioning why, instead of just accepting it, that is a red flag, that they don't respect personal boundaries and should probably be avoided. Not be 100% true, but seems like a good rule of thumb. That is a pretty good rule of thumb. It really is a good rule. This happened to me a bar years ago. A guy I had been eyeing for a bit came over with a drink and offered it to me. I was not expecting it, and I, my friends, had a hard rule that if we do not see the bartender make the drink and hand it directly to us, then absolutely don't drink it. I was very polite to him and said, no, thank you. I'd already drink, but I appreciate it. He was insistent that I take the drink. I refused several times and finally became uncomfortable enough that I told my friends we should walk over to a different bar. One of the girls I was hanging out with watched the guy put the drink on a nearby table and walk away from it. Did not offer to any of his friends. It's better to be safe than sorry. Someone, like an SO, that has no issue with threatening you during an argument. Don't be the person that says, they didn't mean it. Pause. They'd never do it then. It was just one push, etc. If there are signs of any kind of abuse, be it verbal, emotional, physical, sexual, etc., run the other direction. Wow, I had negative karma on this last night. The problem is, being on the inside of this bring up outside two different things. I was in an abusive relationship. When things happened like that, all I could see was that it was my fault. I had wound 
I had wound her up and so she lashed out. It wasn't until I got out of that that I thought about how she would lash out at me for everything and I just made it my fault to justify it. Uh, if people come up to your door unsolicited and ask for money for anything to try to sell you anything, recently had some girls trying to get me to donate money to give books to children in hospital. I asked if there was a website or something I could look up. Nope. Had to be on the spot so they could get points for a trip to Vancouver or something. Told them no thanks. Later, uh, later looked it up, and it's just some book subscription shit. Noth has nothing to do with charity. Fucking scumbags trying to prey on people's good hearts. Not exactly a red frag. A red flag, but if someone says they're an asshole, they probably are. <laughs> yep, but hey, at least they warn you ahead of time. Of all the brands of assholes there are, I'll take that rather than the sneaky kind that pretends to be nice but secretly wait until the right time to shit all over your face. Self-aware assholes tend to be the best kinds of assholes because they're less likely to get defensive and aggressive if you call them an asshole. Asshole here, I love when people call me on my bullshit. It makes me know that they care that I won't get stuck too far up my ass. This is a good one. People tell you who they really are early on if you're just paying attention. If they actually say those words, believe them. An offshoot of this, I'm just brutally honest, aka, I love to use this as a I'm a rude asshole free card. Oh yeah, that's true. Yep, I married and divorced the self-proclaimed brutally honest. They used it as an excuse to criticize anything he wanted, and I say I shouldn't be upset slash mad slash disappointed at what I was hearing because he was just being honest. Consistently getting D's and F's on majors exams in class indicates that you probably change your study habits or your major <laughs> fuck meteorology. I swear, it's like everyone hates the majors. I love my major after I drop out in short break from school. Ugh. That was me in my Japanese class. Within the first week or two of the relationship, I'd kill myself if you left me. Run. Run far away. Don't look back. When you're walking on eggshells to keep them in a good mood and happy. When you have to change your behavior to keep them happy and not angry. When you call them out on bad angry moods directed at you and they'd argue it's really your fault they lost control and you start to think they have issues, I should be more sensitive. Wow. What Susie says of Sally says more of Susie than Sally. When someone tells you something about another person that is supposed to be a secret, even if it is a relatively small thing, don't confide in them anything. If they spoke about them, they will speak about you. Every single ex being crazy. If someone cheats on someone else to be with you, that's a pretty big red flag that they could do it to you. When someone is trying to sell you something and they use the phrase right now, as in act right now or pay right now, then it's a fucking scam. Also, multi-level marketing. Heard the Zane, kind of a red flag situation. If you run into an asshole in the morning, you ran into an asshole. If you run into an asshole all day, you're the asshole. If a girl fakes being pregnant to mess with you, <laughs> turn and run, change your name, and move into a new life as a hermit in Siberia. <laughs> if she honks at other cars and funeral home parking lot. Uh, everyone running away from something while screaming. You think we should go check that out, Sergeant? Nah, they're just playing tag. Let's go grab some more donuts. Nice. That's why you're in charge. I would have never have thought of that. Quit sucking up, Simmons. Yes, sir. Hey, Sarge, I think you're wrong and also stupid. Let's just have donuts. Go take a look. If the blues got themselves killed, I'd like to know soon so I can get back to napping. Why, Griff? Did I just hear you volunteer for a suicide mission? No. Fantastic. You leave immediately. I, I assume this is a reference to something. I have no idea. People that only want to be around you when you have money. Never being happy with just spending time with you, whether it's a romantic relationship or a friendship. If they are always vocalizing how they wish they were meeting new people, how the night was a waste unless they met someone new, how they want to go out all the time, how they can't just spend one night in with you, red flag. I had a best friend who said to my face, it was a waste of gas money to come out tonight because we didn't meet anyone new. If they can't have fun with just you that night, what's the point? If they're always wanting to meet new people, be in the club scene, or just be seen, major red flag in my book. I like the friends I can have fun with no matter if we're at a club or just at home watching TV. That sounds like a really bad friend. If someone tells you that they're going to make the world's first fully functional Master Chef armor suit and all they need from you is some fiberglass, any lights, especially the check engine light in your car. Also, any sound your car is making that it didn't used to make. 
if you're buying or selling something and they keep trying to tell you how good something is even after you've clearly after you're clearly interested Sarily? I think this is just spelled a little bit backwards There's, if a job interview feels like a sales pitch when they're telling you how good the company is and why you should work there dirty bathrooms in a restaurant or dentist office Uh, your gut. If a person or situation feels off or not right to you, it definitely shouldn't be ignored. Dang, there's still a lot of other ones. It's already like 25 minutes long. Alright, I think I'm just going to end it here.